Hey, Coach Fuller. Looking at the depth chart, Kalen DeLoach, sharing duties with Amari Gaynor at stud. We heard you guys gush a lot about Gaynor early in the preseason, but what put DeLoach in a position to compete for a starting role there? Uh, consistency, athleticism, um, made the plays that came to him in those scrimmages and throughout practice. And, you know, it's just – it's an ongoing thing. But right now, those guys are both going to help us play football at that position. Um, and the Kalen Brooks has really come on, too. You know, it's – you know, not possible to get three guys – all in the game at the same time, but you know, there'll even be times that maybe both of Amari and KD could be in the game at the same time as well. So, uh, but Kalen's really come on. Um, Amari's doing a good job. The Kalen's doing a good job as well. But you know, just the consistency that Kalen's done and the work he's put on over the last couple of months um, has helped him gain some gain some reps. Hey, Coach, uh, I know you guys have a, a lot of different options at a lot of positions, so I'm sure this will be fluid. Um, do you look for opportunities in, even in a season opening game to – if guys have earned playing time but maybe aren't the first guy out there, do you look for opportunities to get guys in or do you want to roll with the main guys for as much as possible? Yeah, I mean, we want to win the game and we want to play the best we can. And so that looks a lot of different ways, right? I mean, we're not going to just play one play. You know, we could play 50, we could play 100. Um, so you know, we've got to just have a plan that we're trying to win the game. And so that is infinite, but it's also got a finite at the end of the game, right? So we're trying to play every guy that earns the right to help us win the game. And do that in a way that the guys that we think can do it the most play the most, uh, but don't play too much that they can't help us at the end of the game too. So, I mean – Flu is a tough word, um, but I mean, they, there's a plan with every one of these guys as far as how it's going to play, especially one through quarter two. And then we reevaluate as we go. I mean, I've been a part of a game where we've had six three and outs to start the game. We've had a 14 play drive in the first series. So, you know, it's all got a plan, but you've got to be fluid enough to adapt based on how the game goes. Um, but we, all these names that are on this depth chart are going to play some sort of way, you know, whether it's three, four, two units in the kicking game, whether it's one unit, whether it's third down, whether it's first, second, third down, whatever that all is, whether it's a returner, whether we put them on offense, like there's a lot of different things that can happen with these guys. And uh, again, we're, just, we're trying to win the game, we're trying to play our best, and um, there are a lot of moving parts still, but yeah. Coach, uh, Georgia Tech still hasn't settled on the quarterback as far as I'm aware. Um, how much does it benefit you all to have a quarterback room with a varying amount of talents when the same situation is kind of replicated over there? They have players who are good at running. Some are good at just, you know, consistent system quarterback. So, so the question just are having a bunch of quarterbacks here? Yeah, how does the, the benefit of having quarterbacks with a varying amount of talents uh, prepare you in approaching a team that has the same kind of situation where you don't really know who you're getting yeah. exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's like, I mean, quarterback happens to be the position, right? Because there's only one of them out there. So, and usually when you put a plan together, who the other quarterback is, is a big part of the plan because he touches the ball if you play. Um, you know, and I have coaching games where they've played in world quarterback, we play in games that it's a lone starter. I mean, it's all just part of it. You know, it's, I try not to get too caught up in it all. I mean, they're going to put somebody back there and, you know, based on how they played offense in the past, that guy, you know, is going to run the ball, he's going to throw the ball, he's going to lead certain things, he's going to be RPOs. You know, there's a lot of things that can happen. And you know, my job is to make sure, and our job as a staff is to make sure it's clear enough to our players that, like, listen, there's going to be a quarterback back there, and these are the plays that we're probably going to get, and this is how we're going to defend it. And if it goes this way, we thought it was going that way, this is how we got to react to it. And just trying to talk about it very broad terms and then give them specifics to how it's going to affect them and um got to have the ability to adapt and adjust as things change you know but um yeah I mean, they could not tell us because the first part of the game i don't care I mean, whatever it is you know, we just got to be ready to defend what they're going to do coach fuller we've, we've heard so many good things about travis jay but renardo green's a guy who seems to be kind of level with him so what does that say about what renardo's shown you guys through camp uh, there's nothing about Renardo that's level. He's done a great job. I mean, you go watch him from the, that third spring practice that we finished until now. Um, 
not doing anything negative in the first three that we had in the spring. But from that point till now, I mean, he's grown as much as anybody on our defense. You know, just showing up, um, playing with great energy and effort, um, trying to study, you know, and put himself in the right place. But whether it's playing man coverage, zone coverage, tackling the football, um, becoming a blitzer, like we put him in a lot of different positions. Uh, you know, Renardo has done a great job. And, uh, you know, he's going to be on the football field a lot from Saturday. Um, we, we have high expectations for him. Hey, Coach, there were, I mean, obviously a lot of guys, judging from the depth chart, in contention for that uh, cornerback spot. Jerry and I know is listed against Asante for whatever that's worth. I guess, how impressed have you been with how he's come in, I mean, into a crowded room and really established himself quickly as a transfer player? Yeah, I mean, he's played football. You know, I mean, we've had guys on here, you know, you look at course, Asante's played a lot of football. You know, Akeem Dent played a lot of football. Jerry and Nico's played football, you know, Jarvis – you know, some Carlos has played, you know, other positions, you know what I mean? So, you know, they're all kind of on the same level from a standpoint. They've all played some, uh, some they obviously having the most playing time, but, you know, you know, listen, guys have been dinged up, guys have come back, you know, it's all of that. But Jared showed good consistency, um, you know, so, I mean, you know, he's going to go out there and, you know, hopefully battle his tail off like he has the last couple of months since he's been here. Uh, but, you know, he won't want to be the only one, but you know, he's done a nice job. He's he's coachable. Um, he's made his one-on-one -on -one plays. Um, you know, we got to keep improving at some things that that he knows of. But you know, we're happy with him where he's at right now. And you know, he's the type of young man that I know he is. You know, tomorrow we'll just show up and have a great Tuesday practice. Hey, Adam, looking at the depth chart at defensive tackle, you got four guys listed on the two deep that have started meaningful games in, in big time football uh, programs. So just how much of a luxury is it to have have that that sort of depth and, and talent at that position? Well, it's huge. And, you know, you know we got two cops at Malcolm Ray that, you know, maybe just don't throw all the names down here. But, I mean, you know, it's you put these names in bold, maybe they go out the first play, maybe they don't. But I mean, you know, especially at that position. I mean, it's such a high effort contact position that, you know, you want quality players. But I mean, you're only going to put players on the field that you think can help you win the game. Um, you know, now obviously the fifth guy may not be as good as the first guy at everything, but there's certain things he's going to bring to the table that you're going to try to get him in in those situations. You know, and it's, a, it's a long game. you got to be on the – keep guys fresh and play with the high effort that you're trying to get out of that position. Um, so, I mean, to have, you know, the six guys that we have, I mean, it's, it's huge. And, you know, hopefully that pays dividends, not only in the, in the first game, but throughout the season. So, you know, listen, there'll be times we'll put two guys on the two D tackles and be times we put three D tackles. In the game. There'll be times we put one, you know, um, but to have the six guys we have, those four that you mentioned, and, and we put Malcolm and True with that group, I think it gives us a solid depth up the middle that we've got to make sure it shows up through all four quarters. I wanted to sneak in two questions if I could, Coach. One is um, with Travis Jay, I know you guys were excited about what you saw from him in the spring uh, and then early in camp. Um, I guess has he continued to develop and, and the fact that you guys have him potentially playing two safety positions, uh, how difficult is that? Um, and then also with Hamsa, I know – Hamps has worked really hard to be able to get back. How has he handled not being able to get back for this first game? And uh, has he been a help to the other safeties, even though he's not being able to play? It, um, Travis is listed at two spots, but, you know, Ray Woody can play both spots. Um, Leonardo, I mean, even, even Jaden. I mean, Jaden's played two spots. Cyrus Fagan has played three spots in the secondary. So, you know, how we coach it, um, we try to create flexibility um, because, again, you know, you're a backup at a spot, um, but the other backup isn't as good as you. Hopefully the guy at one spot can play the other spot. And you're trying to get your best players on the field as often as you can. Uh, now if it slows them down, they can't play fast, they can't play smart, you probably got to rearrange it a little bit, you know. But, you know, Travis, you know, he's not perfect yet. You know, there's still a lot of football that has to happen to him. Um, and you're trying to squeeze out that football having to happen on game days. Uh, but, you know, Travis has shown a lot of flexibility and doing a lot of good things. We, we start him out at corner. Um, we moved him to safety. So we think it gives us the best chance to put our best guys in the best position to, to play. And, uh, you 
They travel play both safety spots. Um, you know, we return kicks and punts in front of other kick units for us. You may see them nickel sometimes too. I mean, you know, Travis is a natural football player, but you know, he'll get a lot of playing time for this call. And then the second half was of the question, you know, I hate that Ham can't line up with us this first game, and but he's doing everything he can. Um, we're trying to hold him back a little bit, um, which I, I don't think he likes, but he respects. Uh, but Ham's been a great teammate, you know, and just seeing him grow and his um, his knowledge and just how he's doing things, you know, he's never somebody, hey, I got to check on Ham. I know he's not involved, you know, in team at reps or, you know, but he's always there, you know, and he's there for, you know, just support and, you know, energy and, you know, he's a, he's a smart football player and, you know, I'm just, I know he's chomping at the bit and he'll be, he'll be back here on a few Coach Norvell talked about how he just has all these sort of contingency plans in, in case anything arises in, in this sort of day and age of coaching football with health and, and player personnel stuff. So with all the uncertainty that, that every sort of team is undergoing this season, what does it do for the psyche of these 19 to 20 year old kids when a, when a guy who's as detail oriented and, and focused on the little things as Mike Norvell is their head coach? Uh, explain the question one more time. I'm sorry. Uh, just, with so many things being uncertain, it seems that Coach Norvell's a guy that plans for pretty much everything. So when you have a guy like that as your leader and you're a 19, 20 year old football player, I mean, what does it kind of do for your uh, emotional state or your preparation when you have a guy like that leading you? Hopefully it exudes confidence. You know, you, know, you, you hope that's what happens. Um, let's say, you know, remember when we were 18 and 19, I mean, you, you have these, these, these district goals that you want to attain yesterday. And then these things called life come up every day and you're like, man, I'll never get to this goal, you know? And then they accomplish one thing and they think they're already at the goal, you know? And it's a constant rhythm of trying to keep our guys in the lane of just work. And whether they've accomplished whatever the goal was or they feel like they'll never accomplish it, it's still about getting them back in the lane of the focus on the one play at a time, the 1% climb, like everything just to try to get better. And it takes a lot of work. And so, you know, Mike's as good as there is in the business as far as redirecting our focus and making sure that we're focused on the little things and the details that it comes with and the work that needs to be done. And, um, you know, I think our players appreciate that. Um, but again, as you said, as on their 18 and 19, and they need that reminder every day. And, you know, I think just what's happening now out there, you know, with, with everything that we got to stand up for, right? Um, whether it, you know, everything that's coming up right now. You know, we need to do a great job as we have always, but even more so nowadays of just making sure we're talking about the big things that are out there in this country. But at the same point, we're focused on the work, the details of what we're doing right now. Um, and being open-minded enough to be able to have the conversations about the unity we need in this country, you know, dealing with the COVID implications that we have to deal with daily. I think it's all part of the education. And as educators, we can't be afraid to talk about those things, but also be detailed enough and be really to focus enough to deal with what's in front of us every single minute. So and that's the balance that we're all trying to have. And um, there's no better leader in this country than Michael Bell. Thank you. Thank you.